Hi there, welcome to the pensions module. My name is Ash and I'll be your host today from Wise Up Financial Education. In this presentation, I hope to give you a bit of a content heavy information on pensions so you have a basic understanding of the types of pensions that are available to you as you enter the working world very shortly. So I'm glad that you're interested in pensions at such a young age because it's gonna make the world of difference and I'll explain to you why in just a second. But let's think about the future for a minute. I want you to actually think about it. Pause the video if you need to and think about it. Do you want to retire? I'm hoping you're going to say yes at some point for this. But when do you want to retire? And how much money do you want to have when you retire? Sounds like a pretty weird question, but think about it. Pause the video if you need to, but think about how much money would you want to be spending on a monthly, yearly basis? whenever it is that you choose to retire. Okay, maybe even write that number down. Think about it because it'll become relevant through the presentation. What do you want to do once you retire? This might help you answer the previous question or change the number you've already put down. What kind of a lifestyle do you want to be living? Do you want to be traveling? Do you want to be chilling at home? Like, what do you want to be doing once you retire? Write it down. For each person, it's different. And again, at what age do you want to retire? Okay, a com amalgamation of all those things will matter for when we go through the presentation. And when do you think you need to think about pensions? Hopefully, if you've voluntarily chosen to watch this video, then you're thinking about it already, which is awesome. But most of the time when we speak to people, they think they don't need to think about pensions until they're 60 or 65 or 70 or once they are retired. And most of those answers are not that, not that great. I'm glad that you're checking out the video now because now is probably the best time for you to think about it at at least the most basic level. Here's what we're gonna to cover today. We're gonna to talk about what a pension is and why you should care about it now. I'm gonna talk about some of the types of pensions that are available to you. I've also given you a link at the end about a pensions calculator that you can use to think about how much money you're going to need and have at, at your retirement. I'm going to quickly touch about the, the effects of inflation on pension and how you need to be preparing yourself, especially nowadays where there's double digit inflation. Hopefully you have seen some of our other material on inflation and how it affects your budget and your financing and things like that. If you haven't, I urge you to go and watch that. That's on our website. It's also on our YouTube channel. You can go check it out. It's Wise Up Financial Education. And also I'm going to leave you with some more details at the end. It's an appendix that on the website you can go and download the slides for, or in the video I'll, I'll fast forward through it, but you can pause it and read through the slides because that's information that's going to be handy to you. So let's crack into it. What is a pension and why should you care? I've left this all in here. It's a bit of a text heavy slide, but I want you to think about in a simple way. Okay. First of all, let's look at the left side. What is a pension. Effectively, it's just money that you store away while you work so that you can contribute towards supporting yourself when you retire. That's it. You put some money aside as you're working right now when you're able, and that will help you once you're no longer working. Why should you care right now? Well, one reason is a lot of, a lot of you might be thinking about getting part-time jobs right now. Some of you, once you finish your schooling, you might go straight into employment. So you need to think about how it might affect you because no one teaches you about pension later on. Okay, you only need to be researching it on your own. So now at least have the benefit of someone teaching you about it, which means you're going to be going into the world much more prepared than most of your peers. So normally people will think that a retirement age is around 66. That's when the average person will retire. And most people will think that they're happy to be putting about 200 pounds per month aside and the employer will also match that. Great. Now that's the average. Let's look at some differences. What might happen if you start investing into your pension at 21 versus at 35? Okay. If you start investing at the age of 21 into your pension pot, now at the age of 66, when most people want to retire, you will have a pot that's worth approximately 267,000 pounds. 
okay? That's going to be sitting there for you. It's your money ready for you to claim. Of course, this is an average amount of money. It's not necessarily the exact money you'll have because inflation and multiple other factors will play into it. But let's assume that you're going to put 200 pounds per month aside from the age of 21, you will have 267,000 pounds in your pension pot. If you wanted to live off of 50,000 pounds per year, then from when you retire, you will have about six years until that money runs out. Okay, does that make sense? So by when you're 72, your pension pot will basically be dry. Okay, so if you started investing into your pension pot, the 200 pounds per month at the age of 35, so 14 years later, then your pension pot at the age of 66 will only have 170,000 pounds in it. Okay, so again, if you live with 50,000 pounds per year, which is a very modest living style for now, we don't know what it's going to be like by the time you turn 66, but that will then that amount of money will only last you three years okay just just a bit over so when you're 69 you will run out of money in your pension pot so hopefully that has given you a bit of understanding of why you should care about it earlier rather than later right so now that i've given you a bit of understanding of that Let's talk about your retirement plans. Remember I just asked you what you want to do when you retire? Well, let's think about how much it will cost you. So this whole plans that you had, that you wrote down, hopefully you wrote down, how much do you think all of that will, will, will cost you? I imagine you, know, you are this, these people on the right side, you're on a cruise journey somewhere in the fjords, you're looking out, how much would that cost you? Again, pause the video, write it down, rough figure, doesn't matter, has to, it doesn't have to be exact, but how much do you think you want to live off of in your retirement plans? In the example previous slide, I told you 50,000 pounds per year, you might have a different amount, write it down. Okay, once you've written it down, I want you to multiply that number by 25. Yes, you heard that right, multiply by 25. So if you thought that you need 50,000 to live off of, Multiply it by 25. If you thought you needed 100,000 to live off of, multiply that number by 25 because that is how much money you will actually need in your pension pot when you retire to live a decent life. Now, I'm not saying that to scare you, but I'm saying that to impress upon you the magnitude of the importance of pensions that most people don't talk about or the importance of putting some money aside to think about your retirement because most people want to put that off because they don't want to think about it but you being the smart person you are you should be thinking about it right now so what's your number how much money do you, do you need to have in your pension pot in order for you to retire happily to do everything that you wanted to do in your plans okay so hopefully you've got that down right now you understand the importance of why you should care about your pension and, and how your plans for retirement can, should in fact affect how much money you set aside right now. Let's talk about some of the details, okay? You might be thinking, oh, well, I don't really wanna think about this right now, but here are the three choices that everybody has once they retire. No matter who you are, you have these three choices. One is you can scrape by. State pension, you get a state pension automatically as you start working. I'll we'll talk about what that is in a second, but you just get this basic minimum pension. If you just have that, your option is just to scrape by. You will not be able to go on trips, do all these extravagant things. You will just be able to scrape by once you retire based on current conditions. The second option for you is that you manage. You're okay. You're all right. You're not starving. You're also not going on a holiday every other month. Okay, this is if you have a state pension and a potentially good work pension. Again, the details of the pensions I'll talk about in a minute. Now, the third option for you is you're thriving. And in this case, you're most likely able to do the plans that you set out for yourself. And in order for you to have that, usually you will need a state pension plus a very, very, very good pension scheme or investment plan or whatever else you have in order to put money aside for everything you want to do. That's why this simple calculation of 25 times the money that you put down before 
is actually a pretty good rule of thumb to go by. So let's go into a little bit more detail. And you think about which one you want to choose in the meantime. So types of pension. There are four types of pensions that you can see over here. Okay, the workplace pension, we've got self-employed pension, the nest pension, and the state pension. We'll talk about the details right now. So what are these things? Well, the workplace pension is nothing but when you start working, you're going to put some money aside. And that's you. Whatever money you put aside, usually your employer will also match that, if not more than match that. That's a typical standing of how an employer will contribute towards your pension scheme. So if you put aside 200 pounds per month, then your employer will put aside 200 pounds per month. So in total, you are getting 400 pounds into your pension fund per month. This amount will is tax free, i.e. it goes out of your paycheck before you pay tax, which is good for you because it means the total amount of income that's actually taxable goes down. So you pay less tax overall. Okay, so putting money aside in a pension pot could be very, very good for you because it comes out before your tax. And this amount of money that you save up is actually accessible just when you're 55. So if you really wanted to retire when you're 55, you can. And you can take out a 25% lump sum from that pension pot that you've put there. And then everything after that you can take as a monthly recurring income to yourself. So that's a possibility of a workplace pension. If you're self-employed, you have multiple options for, for pensions. You've, of course, got the state pension. By the way, everybody gets state pension as soon as you start working, like I mentioned. So you also have your own personal pension, so you can just decide where your pension will go and you can uh, fund your own pension online or some other resource and you can give it to a, a fund manager and they can invest all your pension plans for you. Or you've got what's called a stakeholder a stakeholder pension. And so you can, that's a different scheme. You can look at that as well. Or a SIP. SIP is a self-invested pen, personal pension. So again, it's like a personal pension, but instead of somebody else managing it for you, you invest it on yourself and you figure out where that money needs to go. So you've got a multiple multitude of options, even if you're self-employed. You have what's called the nest pension. That's just a government-backed scheme that allows you to benefit from the pension by the way all of these things can be mixed and matched you don't have to just stick with one the whole entirety of your working career and life you can mix and match any of these things so if you're a nest pension you're, you're eligible to it as, as soon as you become 22 and you're earning more than ten thousand pounds per year so as soon as you're earning more than ten thousand pounds a year and you become 22 you can access the nest pension and just like a workplace pension this is also accessible at the age of 55 and you can also take out that 25 percent lump sum that i mentioned so you've got the state pension as i said everybody gets it it's a regular payment that has to go out month on month and you can withdraw this at the age of 66. okay and the amount that you can actually withdraw varies based on your personal circumstances and in order to maximize this pot, you need to be investing into it for 35 years at least. I hope you understand that. So if you start working at the age of 20, then you can maximize the amount of money you can get from your state pension at the age of 55. Okay, but you can't withdraw it until you're 66. So none of these things are necessarily just granted to you is just going to just going to happen you have to opt into it and that's why we're making this presentation because a lot of times when you go start working the employer will ask you or they will just give you a form where you might have to fill out that you tick a box saying that you want to opt into the pension scheme and some people opt out of it but hopefully as we're going through this presentation it will make you think twice about opting out and instead potentially choose to opt in should you wish but at least you're going into it with your eyes wide open. So let's talk about some national insurance contributions. And this is gonna be a line that you see in your pay slip as you get paid. You might've heard your parents talk about it, that there's what's called the NI contributions or national insurance contributions. So this is of course linked to your national insurance number. You'll have this once you start working and you need to have a national insurance number as you work. That's one of the requirements. And this contributes towards the state pension. So that's why everybody who works will get a state pension because you have a national insurance number. This also 
just like your personal pension and workplace pension is deducted automatically by the employer before your tax goes out. But this is more like a tax that it actually is taken out of your payslip and doesn't just go all into your pension pot. It gets allocated into different ways, depending on where you're working and depending on your borough and things like that. But a portion of the national insurance contribution will go into the state pension, which you will have the access to as well. So usually right now, at the time of this filming, it's 12% of national insurance when your earnings are between £12,750 to £50,024. Unless you are in a specific other company scheme. Some companies that you work with will have a different national insurance scheme and different pension scheme. And in those figures, it will vary. But the idea of this is just to give you an understanding, a basic understanding of what national insurance is and the fact that a specific percentage of that comes out of your paycheck. For you, as you start working, just check it out. Make, you, know, you will be able to see what it is. When you're in a part-time job, you might still also be paying national insurance and tax. So if you receive a payslip, check it. You might have these numbers on there already and you'll be able to figure out how much that is. And usually 2% of national insurance contributions happen over 50,000 pounds. So I hope you get that understanding of a basic, what national insurance contributions are and some of the different types of pensions that you will have examples to, access to. So let's think about a, a pension calculator. It's a really simple example that I want to illustrate how the amount of money you put aside will affect the earnings that you have. So right, if you start right now, okay, and you want to retire at the age of 70, let's not really worry about the graph over there. Just look at the, the text on the right side disappearing. So if you want to retire at the age of 70 and your desired pension amount that you want to live off of is 50,000 pounds per year, and let's expect. figuring out whether you want to opt into a pension scheme or not, maybe this will. Let's have a quick activity. Let's think about how much of this you remember so far. I know that we're going fast in this and it's content heavy, but the reason for that is just because you will have to figure this stuff out later with a little bit more detail. But the idea is to give you a basic understanding of pensions and how important it might be for you to consider opting into it sooner rather than later but let me ask you what are the four types of pensions do you remember pause the video write down if you have a piece of paper or phone or your laptop or just think about it what are the four different types of pensions pause the video when you're ready let's move forward so the four types of pensions hopefully you've written these ones down are the workplace pension self-employed pension nest pension and the state pensions Okay, so what is 
a workplace pension. What are some of the key details that we talked about in the workplace pension? What happens? Again, pause the video, write down what you remember. Hey, don't cheat and rewind the video to see the answers, okay? Instead, just pause it, write down what you remember. All right, once you're ready, let's move forward. Boom. So the workplace pension is you and the employer contributing to it. It's tax-free because it gets taken before your tax comes out. You can access it at the age of 55 and you get a 25% lump sum allowance as well. So hopefully you remember those things. Now, what about the self-employed types of pension? What are some key details there? Again, pause the video. When you're ready, let's move on. All right, so state pension, personal pension, you've got stakeholder pension and SIP pension. So that's self-invested personal pension. And those things are, again, you can have a tax-free allowance for that and the access is also at the age of 55. I hope you got those down. Let's talk about nest pensions. What do you remember there? Again, pause the video. Once you're ready, let's move on. There we go. So we've, nest pensions are government schemes or government-backed scheme. You're eligible to it once you're 22 and you're earning more than 10,000 pounds. And again, you have access to it at the age of 55. So finally up there is a state pension. What do you remember about state pensions? Pause the video. When you're ready, we'll move forward. All right, so state pensions is regular payments that go in month over month, and you can access it at the age of 65, and to max it out, you should be putting money into it for 35 years. So I hope you remembered all of those things, and if you don't, this is, take a screenshot of this, etch it into your memory, because this is the most basic understanding of pensions that you need. If you're working right now, you need this. If you are going to be going straight into employment after your schooling, then you should understand this. And even if you're just doing part-time jobs, it's better to understand this pensions and how it works because you'll likely be ahead of 90% of your peers who are not going through this training. So let's talk about inflation really quickly because that affects your pensions. And if you've been through some of our other trainings before, you understand what inflation is, right? It's where your money loses its value over time based on different political and economic factors that happen. So your five pounds is not going to be able to buy the same amount of things in the future as it is currently. That's the idea. So how does it affect your pensions? Let's remember a couple of things. Inflation varies over time, right? It's not a constant figure. Right now it's at double digits. Some people say 10%, some people say 11%, 12%. All these numbers change, but it just talks about the rate of how your money is valued less over time. Your pension pot will not have the same value when you retire as it does today. So a really simple way to think about it is if you have a thousand pounds that you hide in your mattress, okay, when you are 70, that 1000 pounds will not be able to buy the same things when you're 70 as it could today. Let's say you're, you know, you buy, you want to buy a house today. You can buy that for 100,000 pounds. As an example, at 70, you will not be able to buy that exact same house for 100,000 pounds. So the amount of money that you have in your pot will not be the same and it will be worth less. That's why you need to be putting more and more money into the pension pot for you to live a great life in the future. And that's why we said right at the beginning to multiply your number by 25 because you need that in order to just combat inflation. So I hope that makes sense. So consider this as part of your overall investment and retirement strategy. Okay, so in some of our other modules, we talk about investing, we talk about the different ways you can invest and different financing things and budgeting. When all of those comes in and you wanna be thinking about retirement and investing, you should also consider the effects of inflation. And this is the most basic way I can explain it to you. And I think hopefully it made sense to you, but this is the easiest way for you to incorporate that within your thinking and calculation. Okay. Just, you need to put more money in because your money at 70 is not going to be worth the same as it is today. I hope that gave you a bit of an understanding and the basic principles of pensions and how it affects your current life and how you can plan for it in the future. And thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions or if you want more resources, just 
go on to the website that's there, wiseupfinancialeducation.co.uk, and you can consume some more content. You can download these slides. And also, if you have any questions, then reach out to us on LinkedIn and ask your questions. We'll be able to answer you there. Now, as I promised you, there are appendix slides after this that you can take screenshots of so you can do more reading of the back of that because it just gives you more detail on the different slides on different pensions that are there. As I mentioned, here's the link for the pension calculator that you can use to figure out how much money you need. And there's different variables that you can play about with. So download these slides if you want to from the website and you'll have all of these things. But for now, if you want to just take a screenshot, then I'll just forward through the slides and you can take a screenshot when you're ready. Thank you very much for listening. Have a great day.